the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical psychology for today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we present excerpts from the Dermis Probe by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. In China. It is related of a Sufi visiting China that he was approached by a group of traditionalist priests who said, In our country there have been sages who have interpreted the sayings of great men for many thousands of years. How then could someone come to us from outside and say or act in a manner not foreseen in our philosophy? He answered, When it is desired to bring a piece of land to fertility, the trees may have to be felled. Such an enterprise is conceived and carried out by men of wisdom. Then, perhaps when they have died, it is needful to break the soil and add to it materials which will help to support a new growth. This is carried out by people worthy of respect and admiration. When the time comes for the introduction of a perhaps formerly unknown vegetable, those who bring it are as important as those who went before in the succession, even though to an outward observer they may be outside the succession of ploughing and harrowing. Before the stage of the tasting of the vegetable, there will assuredly be many who will say, This is no action foreseen in our agriculture. A person is only dead when his name is not well remembered. Anwar Yusuhaili. To cause annoyance. The Sufi master Ajnabi said, Write to Mullah Firoz and tell him that I have no time to engage him in correspondence and therefore have nothing to say to his letter. The disciple Amini said, Is it your intention to annoy him with this letter? Ajnabi said, He has been annoyed by some of my writings. This annoyance has caused him to write to me. My purpose in writing the passage which angers him was to anger such as he. Amini said, And this letter will anger him further. Ajnabi said, Yes, when he was enraged at what I wrote, he did not observe his own anger, which was my intention. He thought that he was observing me, whereas he was only feeling angry. Now I write again, to arouse anger, so that he will see that he is angry. The objective is for the man to realize that my work is a mirror in which he sees himself. Amini said, The people of the ordinary world always regard those who cause anger as ill-intentioned. Ajnabi said, The child may regard the adult who tries to remove a thorn from his hand as ill-intentioned. Is that a justification for trying to prevent the child from growing up? Amini said, And if the child harbors a grudge against the adult who removes the thorn? Ajnabi said, The child does not really harbor that grudge, because something in him knows the truth. Amini asked him, But what happens if he never comes to know himself, and yet continues to imagine that others are motivated by personal feelings? Ajnabi said, If he never gets to know himself, it makes no difference as to what he thinks of other people because he can never have any appreciation of what other people are really like. Amini asked, Is it not possible, instead of arousing anger a second time, to explain that the original writing was composed for this purpose and to invite the mullah to review his previous feelings? Ajnabi said, It is possible to do this, but it will have no right effect. Rather, will it will have an adverse effect. If you tell the man your reason, he will imagine that you are excusing yourself, and this will arouse in him sentiments which are harmful only to him. Thus, by explaining, you are actually acting to his detriment. 
a man's capacity is the same as his breadth of vision. Proverb Discouraging Visitors A visitor asked Ajnabi, Why do you discourage people from coming to see you? He said, Because I cannot discourage them from seeing others. The visitor said, I cannot fathom this mystery. What is the meaning of such a remark? Ajnabi said, Going to see a teacher is in itself a condition, a state which is generally divorced from the reason for seeing a sage. If a person goes to see a teacher partly because he is in need of going to see someone, that need to go to see will act as a barrier to his understanding. That is why it is better to go to a feast and taste revelry before going to see your teacher. The visitor said, How can one discover that a visit was made for such shallow purposes as merely to visit someone? Ajnabi said, You can always tell at the departure whether the person has attained his objective. He radiates the same sensation as a man who has been to a market and gone home. Whether he has bought anything or not, he has been to a market. Bahudin A tyrant who fancied himself as a scholar wrote to Bahudin, I am affronted by what you have written which I do not regard as being historically or literally accurate. Bahudin replied, Out of consideration for your feelings, I have written less than one quarter of what I could have done on this subject. Consider, therefore, whether you are not in fact benefiting, rather than the reverse, for I have done far less than I could have done. But know, too, that if a time comes when the welfare of my disciples requires it, I shall write the remaining three-quarters of the matter which offends you, for there is a limit to the extent to which a man may deprive them of truth out of kindness to an opinionated person, whether king, cleric, or scholar. Sugar for a parrot, carrion for jackals. Proverb Reading A Sufi went to the court of a certain king. The scholars who surrounded the throne said, Your Majesty, this man must not be allowed to speak until he has satisfied us that he knows in detail the classical books and commentaries, because otherwise he might harbour thoughts which could be harmful to the kingdom. But the Sufi could not recite any classics, and his manner of speaking was foreign to the scholars, who called him a charlatan and had him turned away. Six months later, the Sufi appeared again and presented himself to the Master of Ceremonies. You are not allowed into the court as a learned man, Sufi, said the Master, since you have failed the test. But I am not here as a learned man, said the Sufi. I come as one who brings a present for His Majesty. He indicated a horse which was following him. When he was admitted into the royal presence, the Sufi said, I have dared to bring this horse to your majesty because it has characteristics which I think worthy of a sovereign's attention. And what are those? said the king. Cause any volume of the classics to be brought, said the Sufi. As soon as the book was produced and put before the horse, it started to turn over the leaves with its hooves. From time to time it paused looked at the Sufi, and neighed. "'Good heavens!' said the king. "'This horse is reading the book and remarking upon passages from it. "'Is this not even more wonderful than the capacities of the scholars, "'who, after all, are human beings and better equipped than a horse to read books?' asked the Sufi. "'Yes, indeed,' said the king. "'But I must know how this wonder came about.' If I tell you, your majesty may be tempted to dismiss all scholars from positions of importance, said the Sufi. Even at that risk, tell me, said the king. Well, I trained the horse for six months by putting some oats between the pages of books, said the Sufi, and that was his incentive, to earn a little for each piece that he knew. 
he supplied the neighing part himself. But that is just the way the scholars are themselves trained, said the king, so we can do without them. And that is the story behind the happy tale of Sufistan, the history of the future. You have heard of it, the time and place where real scholars were able to come into being, because the horse-like ones and their way of training their successors and sycophants were put to flight by the king who became a Sufi. The fruit of timidity is neither gain nor loss. Proverb Eyes and Light The cleric Khatib Ahmed said to Sali of Merv, Illuminate your abstruse subject for me, for Sufi presentations invariably remain dark when I try to approach. Sali of Merv observed, If the blind need eyes and not light, how can a brilliant presentation seem other than dark to them? Tasting Whoever seeks only his own welfare does not taste full success. As the timid fearing the hangover cannot have the delights of tipsiness. Anwar e. Suheili. The significance of the dwelling is in the dweller. Proverb. Kasab of Mazar. Sheikh Kasab of Mazar arrived at the town of Mosul and entered a mosque where a cleric was addressing a large audience on morality and good deeds. The cleric, seeing Kassab taking a seat, called out, And I cannot end my remarks better than by saying that I hope that the heretic Kassab will mend his ways, and will not spread words of separation while he is among us. He will, of course, only pretend that he is speaking the truth. Kassab stood up and said, Tomorrow, in the centre of the city, I shall speak words of hypocrisy for all to hear, but those who do not wish to be corrupted may stay away, unless they are pure enough, through the constant efforts for truth exercised by this cleric, to endure my abominations. The following day, an immense concourse of people had gathered to hear Kassab. He said, I have come to speak to you for your own good. Someone asked, Is this a statement of hypocrisy? Yes, it is, said Kassab, if it is spoken by someone who wishes only to make his name better known. He continued, I shall now make the hypocritical statement. You must do good, because you all know what is good and what is not. Again, someone asked him, How can this be a bad statement? Because, said Kassab, people do not know what good is, and any intelligent man knows that. They only know what they have been told is good or bad. He then said, Words of hypocrisy include saying such things as, Such and such a person is good or bad, or to be followed or to be shunned, when such words really mean, I like him or dislike him, I want to believe in him or to disbelieve him. Then he said, Does anyone want to hear further words of hypocrisy? There was no reply from the crowd. Sovereignty Sovereignty is a wind of change. Hariri The hearts of the noble are the graves of confidences. Proverb Satisfaction is a treasure which does not decay. Proverb
This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.